Hello there friends, and this time I got Max Class Advanced Guide for you. And just like always, let's start with the equipment and then work our way up to strategy part. Since Max Class can hold two weapons, one in each hand, it's up to you to combine them and find the perfect solution for a certain situation. As of default, Max Class is equipped with two weapons, one against infantry called Quasar, another one against vehicles called Comet. There's also a third weapon you can equip instead of Comet. It is called Burster and it is made to deal with enemy aircrafts. And so let's look more into anti-infantry weapons. Of course as a default you get Quasar. And comparing to other anti-infantry weapons, Quasar has the strongest bullet, but the slowest firing speed. And next we have Nebula. This weapon is the most fastest shooting anti-infantry gun you can get. But it has the slowest moving bullet out there. But of course it's only 20 meters slower than Quasar's. So it is not a big of a difference. Also, comparing to Quasar, this weapon reloads faster, but is not as accurate. Next we have Cosmos. This weapon is just like Quasar, only its bullet travels faster, its clip is bigger, but this weapon's reload takes the longest time, and it is most inaccurate of all anti-infantry weapons. In the last but not least we have Blue Shift. Comparing to Quasar, this weapon has faster firing rate and also faster reload, but nor bullet strength or magazine size is as big as Quasar's. And still you must know that this weapon's accuracy is the best of all infantry weapons. I compare every infantry weapon to Quasar because it is default weapon and you will be firing it a lot unless you know what to buy. And here are my two recommendations. Ever since game update 9, Cosmos price has been reduced to 250 certs. And of course if you like to have a gun that has a lot of bullets and is very strong, I would recommend you to choose this one. I like that you can maintain constant fire with this weapon for a long time. But if big clip and strong bullet is not your thing, maybe precision is. So my recommendation for precision would be to take blue shift. After all, this weapon is most accurate of all anti-infantry weapons. Moving on to anti-vehicle weapons. And there are only two you can choose from. Comet and Vortex. As for Comet, this weapon holds two rounds in its clip. And these rounds are basically little plasma balls which explode upon impact, dealing splash damage or direct damage. And just like other plasma balls, either photon PPA or light PPA type, these ones travel slowly. And next we have Vortex, basically a mini lancer, or weapon which acts in similar fashion. It holds 12 rounds in its clip, and to deal more damage it must be charged. And don't be confused, if you shoot 3 single rounds, the damage you deal with that will not be equal to fully charged shot. Besides that, these projectiles you shoot are extremely fast, basically being able to hit enemy vehicles from long distance without a hassle. But keep in mind that this weapon does not deal splash damage, so you must hit your target dead on. And just like Lancer, this weapon leaves a trail behind every shot, so for enemies it's easy to see where you are shooting from, and therefore track you. And here for your enjoyment, I placed both of those weapons together, at the end Comet finishes up this tank quicker. And ever since game update 9, this weapon has been decreased in price, so now it costs 250 certs, and I would strongly recommend you to buy it. And so we come to our last category, but probably most important for max unit, it's anti-air. And as a default you get one free burster you can equip for your max instead of Comet. And I would definitely recommend you to buy another one. Taking down enemy ESFs or Liberators will become much easier task for you. You can use your standard Quasar and your Burster as a full anti-infantry gear. Even though Burster does not deal a lot of damage, it is very precise. That is, of course, if you don't have any other anti-infantry weapon on your second hand. And so let's move on to ability slot. And as a default you get ability called Charge, which allows you to sprint for a small distance. Next we have Ammo Storage Canister, which allows you to carry up to 5 extra magazines on each weapon. And next we have Zealot Overdrive. This ability acts more like on-off switch, which means it does not have any energy to waste, nor cooldown to wait. You can use it whenever you need it. This ability allows you to move faster when you're walking. In fact, your walking speed with Zealot Overdrive will be much greater than infantry's. Besides this, you will also receive extra damage output on your weapons. 
But downside is that once you activate this ability, you receive more damage, which will be still less than infantry receives. I would recommend you to try out Zealot Overdrive, because with this ability you can become one of the most agile classes out there. It's important to note that Zealot Overdrive, once activated, will cover you with shield, which emits more light, so you are easier to be spotted in dark areas. Besides this, also once you activate this ability and start shooting anything, it will leave trail behind, just like Lancer or Vortex. So the last piece of equipment we have suit. For this slot you can choose one of three following items. Kinetic armor, which will give you extra protection against infantry weaponry, that being pistols, rifles, SMGs and carbines. Nanite auto repair system, which will work just like vehicle nanite auto repair system. That is, if you're not being shot at after a while, the system will kick in and start healing you, slowly but surely. And the last which I would recommend you to buy at least to level 4 is flak armor. This item will decrease the amount of damage you will receive from explosions, not direct hits but splash damage. With this item equipped you can survive much longer when you're getting hit by liberator, gunfire or rocket pods from ESF and of course all the other explosives that gets thrown your way. And so let's move on to strategy part. Well let's say for some odd reason you want to go solo with your max. I would recommend you to equip your max with the best weapon you think would do the job, nanite auto repair system and ammo storage container. This set will ensure that you will be able to heal yourself and able to sustain fire for longer periods of time until you resupply again. Next, imagine that there is a front line of enemies that are not letting your guys through. Use your charge ability to charge behind enemies lines and kill anyone inside there, even if you die afterwards. If you take out 3 or 4 key points, your teammates will push through. But charge can be also used as an escape tool. If you're low on health, or many enemies are starting to come after you, use your charge to run away from them, hide, or get back into your spawn. With the new vehicle harasser, max unit can sit in the back. If you're using dual bursters on this max, you, your body as a gunner, and this max can become a ultimate death squad. Keep in mind that max unit cannot be driver nor pilot for any aircraft or vehicle. And also, there are only two vehicles that actually can pick up Max as a passenger. One is Harasser, other one is Thunderer. But in it, you can be one of the gunners. And as for aircrafts, Galaxy is the only aircraft which can pick up Max as a passenger, and also as a gunner. Max class is definitely a frontline fighter, so you, as a Max, should stand and fight, and if possible, push the front line. Besides that, it would be much safer for your teammates if you enter the building first. First of all, because you can step on enemy proximity mines and not die, and second of all, your big scary hunk of junk. And enemies will either flee or fight you, and those who fight, you can take out if they are not in big superior numbers. Since Max cannot move as fast as any other infantry unit, although sprinting speed is the same, Max is played as a defensive unit. So to be efficient in defense, you must be able to take a lot of punches and deal a lot of punches, which means that you'll have to have some engineer helping you to repair and supply you with ammunition. Your task will be to guard them from enemies, look around to see if there are no enemy light assaults with C4 flying around, and watch for enemy snipers who could take out your engineers. Using Zealot Overdrive you can act more like an ordinary infantry unit. But remember that there won't be any regenerative shields, so you should keep around at least one engineer. Using Zealot Overdrive you can engage in pursuit once your enemy is fleeing you. Or you can use this ability to flee for cover and safety. Also don't forget about your manners. If somebody is healing you, say thank you for this. So at the end I hope I enlightened you, I would definitely appreciate some thumbs up for this video and of course comment on what I missed or what I didn't miss, what you liked or didn't. And eventually come to Woodman Server, Vano Sovereignty and KOTV so you can play with me and many other good players. And before I go I must say big thanks to Real Geno who helped me in making of this video.